Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the GSA 2024 Visual Art Art Form Specific Webinar. Welcome. Uh, for those joining on Zoom, we kind of want to get to know who is joining us tonight. So if you could drop your name and the county that you're joining us from in the chat so we can see who all is here. Sorry about that. Let me get the chat enabled. My bad. That would be helpful. Here we go. All right. Now everybody should be able to drop their name and their county that they're watching from in the chat. There we go. Hi, Felix from Hart County. Hi, Lucy from Jefferson County and Lillian from Hardin County. Oh my goodness. Hi, Annabelle from Jessamine. Emma from Hopkins. Emil from McCracken. Hi, Matthew from Jefferson and Gwyneth from Jefferson. Let's see. Looks like we have Abigail from Fort Knox. We got Lillian from Christian County. Hello and welcome. We got some, we got, looks like we got some more Jefferson County. Bethany, hello. Kenton County, Sinai, welcome, welcome. Maddie from Lyon County. Amazing. Maya from Jefferson County. And looks like we also got Lucy from Jefferson County. Shanna from Oldham, well, welcome you all. Um, thanks so much for uh, being patient with me with that chat. And thanks so much for uh, kind of introducing yourselves. I'm gonna launch a super quick poll just to get a little bit more information about who we have joining us today. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Awesome, so I'm gonna launch this poll. It's only three questions, it's super quick. If you don't mind filling that out for me. That way we can get a little bit more information about who you are and, and um, you know, why you're here. And I've also got, hi, Alyssa from Louisville. Perfect. Looks like we've got some people filling out the poll. If you don't mind filling that out for me, if you have not already, it's only three questions. It is super quick. I'm going to let this go for just a few more seconds. All right, no biggie if you can't see the poll, it happens. Sometimes Zoom's a little finicky. Awesome, I'm gonna go ahead and end this here. We got almost everybody. All right, I'm gonna share out. So it looks like we've got plenty of high school students that are in 10th or 11th grade. That is great um, because you are eligible to apply for GSA. Uh, looks like we've got a couple parents or guardians of potential applicants. Welcome, thank you for being here on behalf of your students. And let's see, it looks like for the art forms you're interested in, obviously we've got everybody <laughs> interested in visual art, but looks like we've also got a couple of creative writers and some designers that are also interested in those art forms. And then looks like about just over half of you have attended a GSA 101 webinar, which is great. Um, the other half have not quite just yet, but you do have a couple more um, opportunities to to attend one of those GSA 101 webinars, which I'm going to be going through here in just a second.
So now we know a little bit more about you all, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. Um, my name is Natalie Thompson. I am the GSA program coordinator. I am originally from Louisville, Kentucky. I'm a 2015 uh, musical theater alumni of the program. I also was on summer staff for a couple of years. I served as an RA and I also served as an administrative intern before joining the team full time this past January. Um, I'm really excited to kind of meet you all even virtually. A big part of my job and, and my favorite part of my job is um, I do the bulk of the monitoring for the GSA info inbox as well as the GSA helpline. So anytime you reach out to the program, you're probably talking to me or you're talking to one of my amazing colleagues. So um, I'll say this later, but there are no scary adults at GSA. Um, so um, it's just honestly the best part of my job. So I am going to go ahead and introduce our panelists. Um, we have esteemed visual art faculty member, Sean Starwood. So Sean, do you wanna go ahead and give uh, everybody kind of an intro to you and your role within the program and what you do outside? Yeah, absolutely. Hi everybody. Thanks Natalie, thanks GSA for hosting this and thank you all for attending. I'm, I'm looking forward to reviewing all of your applications uh and uh later next year um but yeah i i'm also uh, a gsa affiliate i'm a, I'm a 2005 alumni uh, i came back as summer staff so I'm, i've been indebted into this program for a long time uh I, I believe in the power of uh how transformative this summer can be for young high schoolers uh like yourselves and young artists specifically i'm an artist myself i'm based in philadelphia pa uh, and do a variety of different works, a uh, variety of different projects. Um, but yeah, I'm an educator and an artist uh, full time. So I'm living proof that you can do this as um, as a career and as a life goal. Um, and yeah, I don't know, Natalie, did I, did I cover everything, I think, on that end? Yeah, yeah you also served on summer yeah. staff a good amount, too. Yeah, and so yeah, just been yeah. involved in GSA so for in a lot of different and guardians, ways. Yeah, parents and guardians on the call. It's an amazing program. We, uh, you know, I've I've been on the CRS life side, the RAs, all that. So I'm a bit of a GSA um, uh, addict, I guess, at this point. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Awesome. Well, thanks, Sean. So um, just so you know, we will be reviewing the visual art um, kind of application process today. There will be a Q&A at the end of today's presentation. So feel free to use the Q&A feature in Zoom to ask your questions. It is much easier for us to get to your questions if they are in that Q&A feature instead of in the chat. Um, so if you can access that Q&A feature, please go ahead and drop your questions in there. We will get to them at the end. If you're joining us on Zoom, you should also receive a survey survey at the end of today's presentation. This survey helps GSA assess how well we're recruiting. So if you will please, please, please take a moment to fill that out. It is very, very helpful information for us. All righty. So if you aren't already aware, today's session is part of a larger series of virtual info sessions that GSA is hosting throughout the fall for applicants, parents, and educators. So we hope that you'll take advantage of these many resources to learn more, to ask questions, and to connect with the GSA team. So we're going to review this timeline super quick. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have already had two GSA 101 sessions in September and October. Uh, we will host two more, uh, one in November on November 13th and one in December on December 6th. Um, Recordings of all of the webinars that have already happened are posted on the GSA YouTube page, as well as the links to those are on the um, GSA website as well, if you want to watch those. And on October 5th, we launched the GSA 2024 application. So many of you have probably already started filling out your applications, which is great. If you haven't started yet, no biggie at all. You have plenty of time. So on October 5th, we opened up that application portal uh, via Accepted. We also released all of the applicant guides. We'll go through the applicant guide for visual art today. Um, and then we also released an application walkthrough video that kind of walks you through the accepted portion of the application. We also are hosting a series of art form specific webinars. You are attending the visual art one right now. Um, so we've already covered instrumental music, dance, musical theater, creative writing. And then coming up is the film and photo, design, drama, and vocal music presentation. So if you want to join us for those, feel free to check out the links for that on our website. 
And remember that these info sessions are not the only way to get information about the GSA application process. You can contact GSA with any kind of question at the GSA helpline, and it's listed there at the top. It's 502-566-5192, or you can email us at gsainfo at kentuckyperformingarts.org. Like I said earlier, there are no scary adults at GSA that are like waiting to judge you. We love chatting with our applicants and it's our pleasure and our job to help you out. So you can also follow us on social media as well. You can search our program name to find us on Facebook and our handle on Instagram is at KYGSA and social media is a great way to get quick updates about the program and what we're doing throughout the year. All right, so we're gonna quickly review some information about the GSA summer program itself. So GSA is a three week, three week residential summer program that takes place on a college campus. We're currently hosted by the University of Kentucky in Lexington. Students attend GSA for one of nine art forms and the program is completely tuition free. Students are immersed in an intense, challenging, and exhilarating learning environment in one of those nine art forms. And while each student focuses on the one art form they're attending GSA for, interdisciplinary collaboration is a major component of the program. So that means that students are also exposed to and engage with art forms other than their own. So we expect to take approximately 512 students each summer that's spread across two different sessions. And uh, we, we, in the last couple of years, have been able to expand to that number. That's thanks to supplemental funding provided by the Kentucky Department of Education. So students must be uh, currently a sophomore or junior in high school to apply for the program. We will not ask for your GPA, your ACT score, your SAT score, anything like that during the process, and you can apply for up to two art forms, though you will only attend summer program for one of those. There is a $35 application fee that's collected just before submitting your application. If you want to apply for a second art form, there's an additional $15 fee, so it's $50 total if you apply for two art forms, $35 for one. Students who are on free or reduced lunch can have this fee completely waived by the click of a button in the application that is no questions asked. So if you qualify for free or reduced lunch at school, you can get the GSA application fee waived. Like I said, no questions asked. So while we're thrilled to speak with you about GSA's visual art program today, we are confident and we're confident today's session will be helpful. Remember that today's virtual info session will not be 100% comprehensive, and there are some other very important resources that you should utilize to learn more about the program and about the application, all of which are available on our website. It's there at the top, www.kentuckygsa.org. Be sure to read the applicant guide for your art form of interest. We'll review the applicant guide as part of today's presentation, but you should take some time to carefully review the document yourself. We'll um, review different sections of it in differing levels of specificity. So there will be parts that we just kind of gloss over today. You'll want to take the time on your own to read through those sections. Finishing up our timeline, the GSA 2024 application is due by end of day, January 14th. Please note that this is a Sunday and the GSA office is not staffed on the weekend. So that means that Friday, January the 12th is the last day to call or email us with any questions. I'm gonna say this and I really, really hope that you hear me. Do not wait until the last minute to upload your application if at all all possible. The application system will inherently run slowly as more people submit their application in the last day or two. So do yourself a favor and get yourself, uh, get your application in nice and early. We recommend completing your application at least one week in advance of the January 14th deadline. Students will learn if they've advanced to the second and final round of adjudication on February 16th. That's about one month before those final round auditions and reviews will take place. Those will take place on March 15th and 16th, and note that they are hybrid. So that means that some auditions and reviews will happen in person at the University of Kentucky, while others will take place online via Zoom. Full details are in each applicant guide, and we'll very briefly touch on the visual art um, second round final round adjudication during this webinar. 
We'll announce the GSA class of 2024, as well as any alternates who are placed on the wait list on April the 12th. And finally, the dates for GSA 2024 are as follows. So session one is going to run from June 9th to June 29th. And session two is going to run from June, excuse me, session two will run from July 7th through July 27th. So again, session one is June 9th to June 29th. Session two is July 7th to July 27th. All students will attend one of those two sessions and students are assigned which session they attend and will learn which session they've been accepted to along with the class announcement in April. Though most art forms, including visual art, will take place in both sessions, design will only be held in session one and dance will only be held in session two. So like I said, visual art is going to be um, in both sessions, but if you're interested in applying for design, note that it will only happen in session one. If you're also interested in applying for dance, it will only happen during session two. All righty, so that's just a brief overview of the summer program and kind of what this year's application timeline looks like. I am going to stop sharing my screen so I can get the applicant guide pulled up. While I do that, Sean, do you mind sharing a little bit about what it's like to attend GSA for visual art? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the best way to describe GSA is uh, really it's 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 totally like an arts boot camp. For the first time, many of you will be surrounded by other interesting artists. Uh, like it is, um, you know, we are in the studio all day long. Um, you know, we the program, the visual arts program, is really specific in its kind of uh, lineage in terms of we offer sculpture and ceramics as a studio focus area. So every every visual arts student gets an experience in four different studios, which is really unique. So you get experience with printmaking, you get experience with drawing and painting, um, and then ceramics and sculpture. Um, and the way that usually works is ceramics is usually um, hit really hard in the first uh, week and a half because we have to let the work dry and fire it. And then we kind of move into sculpture that way. And there's, it's, there's some kind of timing things, but each every day is different. And you tend to um, be in one of those studios. Um, there's also morning performances and evening performances. Natalie touched on the interdisciplinary nature. Um, we as a core faculty believe in that. Like I'm actually currently in New York uh, prepping for a, a theater production that I'm working on as a visual artist, right? So for, for us, it's really important that we um, encourage a variety of experiences, different kinds of art opportunities for you to think about um, field trips are a part of the program. There's also community volunteer um, opportunities that we incorporate into those field trips in the past. We've done things like, um, we've done uh, Josephine Sculpture Park. We've also been to Bernheim Forest. Uh, and both of those projects um, had, or both of those field trips had a, a community service component. So we really um, strive being, putting things back into the community as part of the program as well. Um, you will be exhausted by the end of the program, but um, in a good way, right? You you all will walk away with a variety of new experiences. We don't expect you all to know sculpture and ceramics too much, right? We don't expect you to have printmaking experience. We will teach you all of those things. That's the beauty of the GSA program is that you come in, um, you know, obviously with the application that we'll get into the application guide, you know, we're asking for a baseline of stuff, but we are we're actually like, learning with you, learning alongside you, you're learning alongside your peers in this really great collaborative studio mindset. And that's that's another thing I wanna to touch on that um, one of our core faculty members really talks about, which is GSA is really a community experience. Um, and we, you know, as visual artists, I think we tend to isolate ourselves in our sketchbooks, in our um, studio classrooms. And really it's a, a really exciting three weeks to be in uh, an environment, a studio learning environment with, you know, 15 other students at a time in a studio class uh, and everybody wanting to be there and everybody really showing up for their best self. So the community aspect is a really important aspect of GSA that we really um, hold dear and near to our hearts. And um, we're really looking forward to like uh, seeing what that community will look like in 2024. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Alrighty, so I am going to share my screen again. This time I am showing you, let's see, can you see this GSA 
homepage. Perfect. Awesome. So this time I'm showing you the GSA homepage. This is what's going to pull up when you type in um, that uh that web link that we uh, shared with you earlier, www.kentuckygsa.org. So I'm going to show you how to get to the applicant guide if you've never been on our website before. So this is the GSA homepage. To get to the applicant guide, you can choose one of two options. You can either choose this button here that says click here to apply for GSA 2024, or in the drop down menu here, you can click the applicant guides and application portal. So if you click that, we're going to get pulled to this web page here. This is the applicant guides and the application portal page. Um, so this is where you'll find the applicant guides, link to the applicant guides, link to accepted GSA's application portal, the application walkthrough video. This is um, a, a video that one of my colleagues put together that helps walk you through the accepted portion of the application, as well as some additional resources down here. So once you click on this applicant guides link, it will pull you to this page. So this is where we have listed all of the applicant guides for GSA 2024. So in this case, we're going to scroll all the way down until we get to visual art. And I've already got it pulled up so that I didn't have to take time to load, but this is our lovely GSA 2024 Visual Art Applicant Guide. So this has all of the information that you need to complete your application. So we're going to start going through it a little bit. So we've got a program description up here. Sean gave a very, very great kind of idea of what will go on during the uh, program. But if you want to see it written out, it's right here. We've also got a link to some visual art program photos from both sessions of GSA 2023. There's some really great photos in there. I definitely recommend checking that out. And now we're going to go through a little bit about the preliminary round application requirements. So that's the round that you are filling out now. This is the round that's due January 14th by 11.59 p.m. Note that that is 11.59 Eastern time. If you are in the central time zone, you only have until 10.59 central. You do not have until 11.59 central. You only have until 10.59 because it has to close Eastern time because that's where um, our offices are located. So you're going to submit the materials in this section through the online platform accepted. This section is, or this um, preliminary round is entirely virtual. And you're going to submit the following. You're gonna submit two recommendation forms, a personal short essay, a personal question video. You'll fill out some art form specific questions in accepted. You'll submit portfolio images, a portfolio cover sheet, and images of sketchbook pages or, and or any 3D experiments. So we'll go through each of these elements. For the recommendation forms, you're going to do this part first. You'll want to identify two people that can um, speak to either your artistic ability or like your character, your work ethic, your overall fit for GSA. So if, like I said, if you can identify two that can speak to your artistic abilities, wonderful, great. Go ahead and have them, you know, fill out your uh, recommendation forms. If you can't, anybody who can speak to, like I said, your character, your accountability, your work ethic, people like Teachers from in or outside your school, if you have a private teacher, they can also serve as a recommender. School administrators like a guidance counselor, any kind of mentors that you have in your life, other people involved in like your personal or artistic development. So thinking like a coach, a youth minister, if you volunteer at an organization and there's a staff member there that knows you well, those are all great people to fill out those recommendation forms for you. So before submitting your recommender's information, we strongly, strongly encourage you to let the let the person know that you're applying for GSA and that you'd like to list them as a recommender. Um, nobody wants a surprise recommendation form in their inbox and they're going, what is GSA and, and who, who put me down? Um, so you'll always want to chat with those people before you submit their information. You should also confirm what email address you should list for them and double check that you have the correct spelling. Uh, so once you submit your recommendation, recommenders information, they will receive that email for to fill out the recommendation form. They will not need to submit any letter of recommendation. They'll just fill out the form. You should remind them to check their email. Here's information about what the email, what email um, that will come from and what the title will be. And then sometimes it will also get sent to junk or spam. So they'll be able to access it from there. But if they're not getting that email, make sure they check their uh, spam or junk folder first. 
And just here's some additional information about recommendations. Some of the biggest things are that uh, your parents or immediate family are not able to fill out recommendation forms on your behalf. So your mom thinks you're great. Your mom thinks you are wonderful, but she unfortunately cannot serve as one of your DSA recommenders. And just so you know, if you're applying for two art forms and using the same recommenders, they must complete two separate recommendation forms for you, one for each art form, even if the answers for those are identical, they can copy paste. So Sean, and do you want to speak to maybe how you all use these recommendation forms, like in the adjudication process? Yeah, I mean, letters of recommendation are always great because they give us a bit of insight to who you all are as like well-rounded individuals and human beings, right? And so I think it's just really important to think about those people, those mentors, those educators, um, those you know youth ministers, whoever you're engaged with. Um, it helps us kind of, it, once again, the application, projects, pro, uh, application process seems arduous. Uh, I know there's a lot in visual art application, but we're just trying to figure out how to narrow down to 80 spots that we have, right? And um, the more information that we have on who you are and what makes you tick, it just um, helps us in that kind of process. And, you know, all aspects of the, the application are really important, right? The recommendations, to the portfolio, to all of that kind of stuff, right? So they're kind of all kind of weighted equally in that sense. Um, but letters of recommendation are a thing that you will be, that will follow you around for the rest of your life, right? If you're thinking about college, thinking about jobs, thinking about fellowships, all this kind of stuff. The letter of re recommendation process is like pretty standard in the creative field, really. Um, so for us, it's really to just kind of see what makes you tick from uh, a friend, a mentor, uh, your art teacher, those kinds of things. Those are all great um, letters of recommendation. Awesome. Perfect. Thanks, Sean. All right, so next you'll also submit a personal short essay and you'll be answering this question here. Everybody will answer the same question that is uh, identified in the um, applicant guide. Note that these are 250 words max. So, um, you know, we just kind of want a little window into who you are and how you think about art um, as well. Same with the personal question video. So everybody will be answering that same question. Um, and the biggest piece of advice here is just being, you know, honest open, authentic in your response, like I said, giving the adjudicators a little window into, you know, the way that you're, the way that you think about art and who you are as an artist and what you see for yourself moving forward. Um, those, they don't have to be any kind of big production. It should just, you know, be you as you are communicating with the adjudicators, both in writing and in that video form. The video is 90 seconds max. So there are some specifications on how to upload those files that are listed in the applicant guide and how you should like begin your video, things like that. So make sure you check that out um, as you're crafting your materials. Sean, do you have anything to add about the personal short essay or the personal question? video no just be yourself right and we we once again this is for us to figure out who you are right this is an, an opportunity for us to like kind of get to know you 90 seconds is not a lot of time so it's like a, it's a good way to it's a good skill to practice right also same thing 250 words you can accomplish a lot in 250 words um we've really um tried to trim down what we can on the application and it, you know we also want to know like how you think about the world and how you think about art and how it's uh, impacting you, impacting your community, uh, impacting your family, those kinds of things. So um, just be yourself. That's it. Perfect. Perfect. And just keep in mind that, you know, like Sean said earlier, while all of the elements of the application are important, these are all just one part of the way that we're going to view you as an applicant, right? So we're just trying to get as much information about you as possible in, you know, kind of the most efficient chunks we can. So, yep. Perfect. Awesome. So next you'll fill out some art form specific questions. Those will be via the, the accepted platform. Um, you can be asked, you might be asked about your specific interests within your art form, your level of access to things like training, classes, class, classes or lessons. Um, and that is just so that the adjudicators can get an idea of kind of the resources that you're working from, as well as like some of your personal opinions about your art form. So just keep in mind that this is not a quiz. It's not scored. There are no like right or wrong answers here. Um, very similar to the personal question video and the personal essay. Um, just kind of giving the adjudicators more of an idea of who you are. 
All righty, Sean, anything to, to add about the art form specific questions before we get into the portfolio? No, I, th I think you covered it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a question. Yeah, once again, this is not a quiz. Uh, it's not weighted in that sense. Um, it just helps us understand kind of equity across the state of Kentucky, right? We're trying to we're trying to get applicants from as many different counties, as many different kinds of experiences. Um, we we also want to make sure that there's like a really good fit across the board, right? And, and representation. So these kinds of things really help us understand. Where, where resources are, what experiences you've had, and really help us kind of craft a, a strong community applicant pool, right? So yeah, once again, uh, I know it seems like an applicant test, but it's not, it's not that at all. There's no way to fail those art form specific questions. The only way to fail is by not filling them out or by, you know, not being truthful and honest in them. That's the only way you can fail those. Absolutely. Awesome. All righty. So now we're going to get a little bit into kind of the artistic meat of the application um, with the portfolio. So this is going to, um, it's going to be comprised of eight total works. Um, and also we just put in a note here, if you are also interested in applying for design, while the guidelines for both art forms are similar, there are a few differences. So you want to use these instructions only when you're applying for visual art, and you'll want to consult the design guidelines if you're also applying for design when you're filling that application out. So of those eight total works, there are four required portfolio pieces. That includes an object study or still life, a self-portrait, an environment or landscape, and a three-dimensional piece made from recycled and or found materials. And there are some additional guidelines for that 3D piece that we're going to go through down below. But for these four required pieces, one of them is must be in graphite pencil only. And then for the others, any variety of wet or dry media, including charcoal, pen and ink, colored pencils, paint, mixed media, found materials, anything you can think of can be used to complete the other required pieces. The self-portrait must be done from direct observation using a mirror. So you shouldn't use a photo of yourself. You should sit with a mirror and draw your self-portrait. It can be 3D as long as it's still done from direct observation. However, if you submit a 3D self-portrait, you must still submit a separate 3D piece for that required piece made from recycled or found materials. And then let's see, this point here, drawing and working from photographs may not be substituted for any of these required submissions. So the object study, self-portrait, and landscape must be created from direct observation of yourself and your surroundings. So when you're thinking about direct observation, you don't need to think, you know, if you're thinking about your landscape, you don't necessarily need a sweeping mountainside. Sometimes drawing your backyard or a local park from direct observation can be more powerful than you working from a photograph of something you've never seen before. So that's why we want to focus on working from direct observation rather than from photographs. And then just also as a note, digital illustrations and photographs may not be submitted for the required pieces, for these four required pieces, but they may be submitted as part of the four remaining portfolio pieces. So we're going to go through um, these the required 3D piece just very quickly. Um, and then we will chat a little bit more about these four required pieces. So um, this is the found materials or recycled materials piece. Materials could include, but are not limited to things like cardboard, paper, plastic bottles, old clothes, natural materials like branches or stones. Um, and, and really like this could kind of be um, a variety of products, right? It can range from wearable art to a freestanding sculpture, an outdoor envisioning of space, any kind of 3D work. It can be as large as you like, but should not be smaller than an average shoe box. So there are some rough estimations of dimensions there that you can see in the applicant guide. So you can add to the surfaces of your piece like drawing or painting on it, but it's not required. Um, so think about like materials. When we talk about found materials, you shouldn't be purchasing art supplies or working with materials that are like conventionally considered appropriate for sculpture. We want to see how you can think outside the box of the materials that are not normally used in kind of 3D art. Um, and this is always a note that we get questions about. This prompt is intentionally vague and open-ended. You have all the information that you need above. So we're more interested in learning about how you creatively problem solve and navigate limitations than we are in seeing like a perfect Michelangelo masterpiece made out of sticks that you found at the park. Um, so 
you know, we want to see you think about it and not just go to the internet for advice and instead, you know, try to spend some time with the material, experiment, make mistakes and be open to things like scrapping ideas and starting over. I love this ending, create something out of nothing. So Sean, do you want to talk a little bit about um, just all of the required elements for those totally. four pieces? Yeah, yeah. So this is pretty much like on standard with any kind of like portfolio, college prep portfolio, that kind of stuff, right? So the the and and this is actually just like a standard artist portfolio, right? So you're you're gonna need to know like the big thing that we drive pretty hard on is direct observation. That's like a pretty sta industry standard kind of approach, um, and we just want to see your rendering skills. We are we are very interested in how drawing is a visual language, and that does not always mean rendering it to an accurate T. Right. We just want to make sure to see how you visualize the world, how you're how you're thinking about line weight, gesture, tonal ranges, all that kind of stuff. So there we you know, while it seems very tight in terms of like it has to be a still life, there's a lot of breathing room there. Uh, it has to be a graphite drawing. There's a lot of breathing room there. There's a lot of opportunity within that. And we just kind of want to see where you're coming from and where we think um, the GSA experience can really kind of take you to the next level in that sense, right? So um, these are all kind of somewhat open-ended. Natalie, great point on, it does not have to be Pine Mountain, right? Um, if, for those in Eastern Kentucky, great. You guys have an amazing landscape to work with. It can be, you know, uh, the courtyard at your school. It could be somewhere in your backyard. It could be the interior of a building, right? It doesn't necessarily have to um, be this grand sweeping landscape. Um, and we want you to be experimental and we, we love digital work. We are not um, discouraging that by any means, right? Um, you have four additional works that you can add into your portfolio. Digital is totally welcome. We know like I, I'm making digital animations right now. Like it, it is just what the, the moment we're in, right? Um, with the, the sculpture piece, really be open, right? Um, it's not, it's intentionally vague. We want to see, you know, how much are you letting the materials inform you that you find? Uh, are you working the tool or tooling the work as they say, right? So this is kind of one of those things. Um, and also I think, you know, we're all kind of coming out of uh, working really small or working digitally because of the COVID years. So the reason why we kind of put that size requirement is we want to see how, um, you know, you all um, work with space and form and time and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, we have a lot of students um, from the previous two years who have never touched clay and walked away with, uh, Natalie knows this because Natalie was in one of the workshops, uh, you know, walking away with 24 inch vessels, right? So we, we go from like, yeah, I mean, there are times where I'm like, oh my God, is this going to fit in the kiln, right? Um, so there's some really exciting opportunities for you all in this process um, and use this as an opportunity to kind of like try new things out um, and get out of those kind of required, you know, AP scholastic gold key type frameworks, right? I know we have those three that are pretty, pretty traditional, but this sculpture piece, like have fun with it, mess around with some new materials, maybe make something you hate, right? That's fine too, right? Um, this is all about growth. GSA is all about growth and trying new experiences, trying new materials, new mediums. Um, so be open um, as, as best as you can and trust yourself and trust the process. Perfect. Awesome. I think that's great advice. Trust yourself and trust the process. Awesome. So as Sean mentioned, you will submit, those are the four required pieces. And then for the four remaining portfolio pieces, you can submit um, kind of anything you'd like in a variety of mediums and subject matter. Um, so make sure that if any, but if any of your re remaining four portfolio pieces are derived from another work or a photograph, please also submit an image of the reference material crediting the original artist when, when applicable. So you will, um, you can include that on your um, portfolio cover sheet or um, that's probably the most helpful place to put that, right, Sean? Yes, yeah, okay. and that's that's a big thing that's going on just, just to throw out for parents too. There's a lot of tension around copyright infringement and original content right now. So it's something that we try to educate uh, these young artists on while at ESA. So in the portfolio phase, it's really important to acknowledge and give credit where credit's due. Um, mm -hmm. If you're copying from a photograph and that kind of stuff. And then one thing I forgot to mention about the still life or the um, direct observation of the um, self-portrait 
is the mirror, right? Like we really want you to think about like direct observation. So you, there's a lot of potential in that. You could compose the string, you know, however you kind of arrive at that, how you want to compose a portrait it, using a mirror. There's a lot of flexibility, but it just has to be direct observation. Um, in the past, I think we, like last year, it might've been from photograph. This year that has changed um, just because we are wanting to see where students are coming from and young artists are coming from in terms of how they choose to render themselves. So that uh, I hope that helps some applicants too. Perfect. Awesome. Alrighty. So we've talked about the required portfolio pieces. We've talked about the four remaining portfolio pieces. Here's just some notes on all of those. So make sure if your work is not already digital, you can digitize it by taking a digital photo or by scanning it and then upload that into the application. So, um, you know, you're not going to be mailing us any pieces. It's all digital. Uh, make sure you can submit up to three images per, per piece for 3D work. Um, and that's so you can capture different angles. Goals. And let's see, do, 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 do. the rest of these are kind of specifications um, in terms of like saving and naming your files so that they correspond with your portfolio cover sheet. We're going to go ahead and cover the cover sheet now so that we can kind of tie that all in together. Um, but also just as a note, verify all your images are upright and not sideways so that you know that the adjudicators are viewing the piece the way that you intend it to be viewed. So the way it uploads is the way that you, the adjudicators will see it on your application. So verify that it's upright. All right, so for the portfolio, portfolio cover sheet, we've mentioned it a couple times. Now we're going to go through a little bit about it. This is one document that should outline all of the portfolio pieces that are uploaded as part of your application. So again, note the file naming instructions above. We're going to go through those a little bit. So your uploaded images correspond with the pieces listed on this sheet. For each work that you submit, please include the following. So you should include a reference image of the work. So that's just like a small image or a thumbnail of the piece. So we can quickly reference it to the higher quality image that's uploaded. And then you only need to provide one reference image for a 3D work on the cover sheet. If you're uploading the 3D image via multiple images, so remember you can do up to three of different angles, you only need to include one on the cover sheet so that um, they can just match it to those three photos. You'll also want to include the title of the work, the year you completed it, the approximate dimensions of the work, the medium that the work is um, utilizing, and then a very brief description of your process for creating the work. So if the work is a collaboration, you should describe your role in the project. Uh, but if it is, you know, just kind of a solo creation that you did yourself, include a couple of sentences about the about the process for that work. Um, save it as a document file and upload it onto your application. So really quick, um, just to review kind of those those that file naming kind of note. So the first piece listed on your cover sheet should be saved as 01 underscore and then the title of the piece. So they should correspond to the pieces and titles as listed on your portfolio cover sheet. So if your first uh, submission on your cover sheet is your self-portrait and it's just titled self-portrait, the image that you submit of your self-portrait should say 01 underscore self-portrait. Does that make sense? Perfect. I forget that I can't see participants sometimes. Sean, do you want to um, go through anything about kind of these naming instructions or the portfolio cover sheet? What, how yeah. is it most helpfully laid out for you all? Yeah, I mean, uh, how we asked for it, right? It's it's basically like a portfolio cheat sheet in a lot of ways, right? It, it's a way for us to quickly glance at the images and have a direct reference of content and knowing medium and that kind of stuff. Because we're reviewing, think about this, uh, however many applicants we have, plus eight, plus five, you know what I mean? So it's a lot of different work and we want to really make uh, keep, keep track of this. And once again, for parents and guardians out there and also young artists, this is an industry standard portfolio cover sheet that like any kind of application, whether that's college, whether that's a, applying for an open call is going to require this. So this is kind of like an industry standard kind of um, model that we're kind of highlighting in this application process. Um, but yeah, be brief too. They don't, the descriptions do not need to, you do not need an essay, you know, one sentence description, even like self-portrait using a mirror, totally fine. Um, you know, prompt you gave me for the 3D piece, that's totally fine too, right? Like, so it doesn't have to be anything um, extravagant there. So keep it simple, um, you know, and, and yeah, that's it. 
Perfect. Awesome. Alrighty. So lastly, along with the uh, portfolio images, the eight required portfolio pieces and your portfolio cover sheet, you're also going to submit images of any sketchbook pages and or 3D experiments. So you should submit up to five of these or you should submit five, um, not up to five. You should submit five photos of pages from your sketchbook and or any 3D experiments that are an important aspect of your creative output. So these items should be a current reflection of your creative journey. Um, think of them as like a visual documentation of your brainstorming and your creative process. And it can consist of in-process drawings, experiments, photographs, collages, cutouts, written personal reflections, any other kind of kind of writing or creative responses. These do not count toward the total number of portfolio pieces you present. So these five, these five images are in addition to the eight required portfolio pieces that we talked about before. Um, these do not need to be included in the portfolio cover sheet, and you should title these with sketchbook underscore one, sketchbook underscore two, so on and so forth, up to sketchbook underscore five. Um, so Sean, any kind of advice when thinking about what kind of um, things they should be submitting when it comes to the sketchbook pages or the 3D experiments? Totally, yeah. This is absolutely about process. This is not about the finished product. So, you know, you're, you're like amazing drawing of a hand. That's great. That's awesome. But like we, we really want like the raw data that's in your sketchbook that you'd be willing to share with us in your process, right? Because um, GSA is so much about process, not product. And uh, there's gonna be failures that happen in the program. Um, you know, the kilns might mess up, a sculpture might collapse. Like this is part of the, you know, part of the artist process, right? So for us to see your sketchbook is also a way of seeing how um, you're developing your own kind of way of making and making meaning in the, of the world and making meaning through art. Um, so yeah, the, the just, you know, be honest and, and, you know, pick a couple of spreads in the sketchbook and just scan them and, and be done with it. Don't overthink this by any means. Um, it's just a way to kind of understand how you're coming to um, uh, making art and your, your kind of creative process, so how you thumbnail, how you kind of bleed out ideas, you know, that kind of stuff. So. Awesome. Perfect. And just as a note, I do see a couple raised hands. If you all have a question, you want to drop it into that Q&A feature. That's where we'll be answering questions from at the end of the presentation. So we're getting close, uh, but just wanted to mention that to you all. Alrighty, so we're just going to very briefly talk about the final round for visual art. So this is the second round of adjudication that will uh, will announce the finalist list in mid-February, and then in mid-March we will have these auditions and reviews. So the final round auditions and reviews for visual art on March 15th and 16th will be virtual. Just as a note, because there's been some confusion in the past, you will only be scheduled on one of those days. So while the reviews are going to take place over two days, each applicant will only be required to attend one session on one day. So the final round for visual art will include a pre-review questionnaire and then a virtual portfolio review slash interview. So that pre-review questionnaire, very similar to the art form specific questions that you'll find in Accepted. So it's going to be some additional questions um, that could be used also to customize questions like in your review or your interview. It could cover just a range of topics. Those, again, just like the art form specific questions um, in part one, you'll just really want to be open and honest with those. Those will be submitted via accepted. Again, it's not a quiz. It's not scored. There are no truly right or wrong answers. Just, you know, share those parts of yourself that, you know, they're asking for more information about. And then the virtual portfolio review slash interview that will happen with the adjudicators, they'll lead a brief conversation with each applicant. Um, and it's a, an opportunity for you to kind of speak to the adjudicators about the qualities of your visual work, as well as like your personal artistic perspective. Uh, just to note, you do not need to have on hand the portfolio pieces that you submitted. Um, however, it might be helpful for you to have 
uh, like images of those if you have them available, just so you can reference them throughout the conversation. If you have new work that's not originally included in your portfolio, you can feel free to have that on hand, but it's not required, nor can we guarantee that there will be time to show that new work. Just if there is time, you know, that might be something that you can um, present to them. The duration of the review and interview will vary by the adjudicator's discretion, but it will likely last no longer than about 10 minutes. Um, but it'll just be time for you to get face-to-face -face time with those adjudicators, chat with them about like your process and your products that you submitted and um, kind of your personal, again, that personal artistic perspective. So Sean, do you want to chat about the final round and kind of, um, you know, maybe give any kind of tips or pointers or um, just kind of how we're utilizing that and making final decisions? Totally. Yeah. It's, it's all about just getting to know who you are. Right. And uh, in this first phase, you're just an applicant, right? And the uh, interview is really a way to kind of know, get to know you better, right? Um, a pro tip, you should just print off your portfolio cover sheet and have it with you for your interview, right? That That's like the easiest, that's why we make you do that, right? <laughs> like it's so that you have it, we have it when we're in the interview. And then that way you can quickly reference like, oh yeah, my self-portrait that you guys have access to, da 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 da, right? Um, but yeah, and and to be honest, everyone, it's it's ten minutes. You know, it's not a lot of time. It goes very very fast. Um, it's a very fast paced uh, uh, ten. Uh, you know, two days for the adjudicators and for all the applicants. So like, you know, it's not. Um, it shouldn't be anxiety driven. I remember when I was a student doing this, I was so anxious about it, and I thought I did terrible, and and I got the the letter, right? So it's like one of those things, it's just about being yourself, um, answer, you know, the pre-review questions, you know, be honest, be open, be curious, all of those kinds of things. And we just want to get to know who you are. Uh, and it's an opportunity to do that face-to-face. -face. Awesome. That was a bit of a theme within the GSA application process is we just want to kind of get to know who you are as much as we can from your materials. And then this chat, this time during the final round is a great way to kind of show your personality and really just kind of show how you connect with others and think about your art and like to talk about it. So, all righty. Now, uh, we do list some criteria that the adjudicators use to kind of guide um, their kind of um, examination of your materials, right? Um, so these are um, kind of the criteria that they're working from. We're not going to go through these in a, in a large level of specificity, but Sean, um, do you want to kind of tell us a little bit about these criteria, like what you're looking for within them and how students can use them to submit kind of the best possible materials? Totally, yeah. I mean, once again, it's it's these are this is kind of like industry standard review kind of process, and um, it's a way of like just understanding how you're composing images, how you're thinking it through your artistic process, your uses of design principles and sense of composition, right? For example, also, you know, it's just a way of thinking through um, how you approach. Like these are all propositions, right? Artworks are propositions. Whether you're drawing a still life, whether you're drawing a self portrait, a landscape. So we're trying to kind of see a variety of, and these all kind of like, it's not like there's a hierarchy. It's kind of like all of them kind of web and flow craftsmanship, you know, if things are documented well or rendered really well or not rendered really well, what was the aesthetic choice for that? You know, we think about all of those things. Um, you know, originality is a big thing right now, uh, especially with the onslaught of AI and the kind of creative process that design does, um, you know, there's a lot of tension around that. So, you know, just understanding how you're like um, cultivating your own voice uh, is really important and to understand how you're bringing that to the table. And then also too, the dedication to the art form um, and just making sure you're putting in the time, right? This is like a very um, intense, amazing tuition-free program, right? And we want amazing people there. Um, and you kind of got to, it's not, an assignment base. There's no grade at the end of GSA, right? There's no final grade. Um, this is like a, a life-changing opportunity to be around other artists, to be with living and working and breathing artists and make a bunch of new work, right? So we just want to make sure you're dedicated to a sense of community and a sense of growth for yourself. Um, and that's really important. Um, and we, and the portfolio helps us see that, the application helps us see that, and then the interviews help us see that. So I think uh, I'll try to be brief and end it there, Natalie. How did, how, did, how did I do? Is it good? That's perfect. That's perfect. Awesome.
great. Well, we've also listed some tips here. Um, these are ones that you will want to, again, read through on your own time. These are kind of portions of the applicant guide that you should really kind of um, take a look at yourself and, and try to see how you can apply those to yourself. But Sean, looking at the tips, are there like two or three maybe kind of big picture tips that you would give to applicants as they're crafting kind of their GSA application? Yeah, I would say that, um, you know, you know, we always want to see works that are going to be completed outside of school. We understand the realities of that, that you might be involved in a bunch of other stuff and you have extracurriculars. Like, we understand that grind, right? We totally understand the, the framework for that. But, you know, I would say doubling down on diversifying and being very open with your portfolio and having some kind of interesting things. Once again, the 3D assignment is a way to do that, to be kind of like, having a little bit of more diverse works in there. Uh, presentation is a big thing too, and just making sure everything like looks really good, it's all lined up, um, you know, the lighting's done appropriate. You know, the best the, the best you can show us your work is the best we can then represent it in the process, the adjudication process. Um, and yeah, and once again, the sketchbook scans, right? It's all about process. We wanna, we wanna be able to see what you're doing. So those would be the, the, the things I would say, is like have a pretty diverse portfolio, be yourself um, and and think about like what really, um, you know, also too, don't sweat if the self-portrait isn't your best work. You have seven other works, right? Um, I remember I used to have so much anxiety about the self-portrait and I would stress and lose sleep on it. It's like, there's other stuff we're weighing in, right? But um, so, you know, just think about that, right? Like think about how to balance out eight images, right? And eight bodies of work, so. Awesome. That's great advice. All righty. So this is a detail of the application timeline that we went through earlier. So it just mentions all of the important dates. Um, just reiterating again, here are those uh, session dates. Visual art will be held in both sessions, but if you didn't hear me earlier, design will only be held in session one. Dance will only be held in session two. I think I've said it a few times now, but just in case anybody's confused. And here's some um, kind of support information uh, here at the end. So if there's any technical issues with the application itself via Accepted, you should reach out to Accepted via that email or that phone number there. There's also, I think, probably like a help button, um, I believe, um, on the website itself. But if you have any questions about the content or the requirements of the application, you'll want to reach out to our team directly, the GSA team. Uh, just so you know, our office hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Eastern. Um, and then the GSA info inbox uh, is there. That's GSA info at KentuckyPerformingArts.org. And again, that GSA helpline, that phone number is 502-566-5192. And yeah, um, that is the applicant guide. So lots of stuff in there, um, lots of very good information that again, you'll want to take time to review um, in your own time. But I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen with you. And we've already got a couple questions in the Q&A feature that I'm going to go ahead and start um, going through here with Sean. If you have any other questions, feel free to go ahead and throw those in the Q&A. That is the most helpful place for us to have those. So, Sean, let's see. We have got a question from Whitley that says, for the 3D piece, are students allowed to use conventional crafting glues slash adhesives if necessary? Absolutely. Yeah, totally. You can, Perfect. yeah. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All righty. Um, we've got somebody asking, is there a certain size that the sketchbook pages need to be? Nope. Nope. If you if it's small, scan it in. You know, just make sure that the, that we can like see it, right? We want to mm -hmm. be able to see your sketches. So yeah, um, it usually depends on how big your scanner is, right? So if you got a big eighteen by twenty four, that's gonna be a little tough. But no, uh, there's no size requirement. Perfect. Uh, speaking of sketchbooks, okay, are the sketchbook slash three D experiments from the creative process of the four pieces you're requiring? the four pieces the applicant chooses or separate. Okay, so Gwyneth, are you, I'm, I think what you're asking is, are you wanting to see the sketchbook or 3D experiments that arise from the process of making those eight required pieces or are they separate from those eight required pieces? Does that question make sense to you, Sean? Yeah, yeah, I, I think you, I, I mean, I, I think you can, that's a choose your own adventure. It doesn't necessarily have to be about how you arrive 
I, I, I don't think we need to like, um, you know, you know, that seems like a lot to ask of you all to like mm -hmm. document the process of making the cardboard or the, the reuse project. So like, I, I would say that if it's other sketch book processes that you have, it doesn't, you don't have to create something new in, in that sense. So just show us your process, how you're thinking about things. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be tied to those four specific pieces. Um, okay. Great if they are, no big deal if they're not, right? So yeah. Awesome. Um, and then we got another question. Can some of the sketchbook pages be digital, like drawn on a tablet? Totally. totally. Just, just indicate that, that somehow either through the labeling um, that it is digital. Um, so like digital sketchbook drawing one and two, real sketchbook, or not real, but sketchbook three and four, right? So as long as you just indicate that they are digital somehow, that would help us. So. Awesome. Great. All righty. Any other questions that you all want to submit? Okay, here we go. Um, okay, so Matthew, how many people in each session for visual art? There will be 40 students per session. So that's 80 students total for the whole summer. Um, those art form numbers can sometimes fluctuate just depending on um, the level of interest that we see throughout the application process. But in the past, visual art has been 40 students each session. That's a great question. All righty. Uh, for the 3D piece, can we use clay or does it have to be recycled materials? We prefer uh, non-traditional art materials for this assignment. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I would I would say no on the clay front. It can be maybe a component of it, but it shouldn't be the major part of it. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to again experiment, try something new. Like it does not have to be your you know most famous masterpiece that you're going to be known for forever all right. and all time on this GSA application. Take time to really experiment yeah. with new things. Totally. And that I think answers the the most recent one, which is the grocery bags, plastic garbage bags. Totally, totally. Yeah, up, that's perfect. Up any, anything and everything. Yep. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, yeah. All righty. So we have a question. Um, does the contents of the portfolio have to be age appropriate or could we express feelings on how we can explain it visually? As if we're not targeting. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, generally GSA is PG-13, roughly, right? Uh, yes. So, like, you know, thinking about content level around that, um, I, I think, you know, it's about your artistic voice. So if you're making work that deals with that, that's totally fine. Um, you have an opportunity to describe it in the portfolio, um, you know, and, and on your cover sheet, what you're going through or what um, you're kind of, you know, explaining. So, yeah, just be be honest and be who you are and and, yeah. Perfect. So do the sketchbook 3D experiments need to be from the eight we're submitting? No, not necessarily. So that's what we were talking yeah. about a little earlier. Yeah. If they are, that's not a big deal, but they do not necessarily need to be from the eight required for portfolio pieces. Yeah. Let's see. For the non-required pieces, so those four additional pieces, yeah. um, is more realistic styles preferred for the pieces or can we submit something more cartoonish? So is there a particular style you all are looking for with those? No, it's, it's um, I mean, we want original content. So if you're doing cartoons, we want it to be your original cartoons, right? Or something like that, right? So, um, or if you're doing more digital work, as long as it's, um, you know, original work, I would say whatever is original and diverse in your portfolio is going to be preferred or, or um, reviewed in a way that um, is like traditionally how portfolio is reviewed, right? So if you're, if you're using photographs, making sure you're crediting the photograph, but then also understanding how you're like evolving the use of the photograph in your digital work or your cartoons or whatnot. So I would say that it doesn't have to be super about photorealism. That is like not always the case. Um, so yeah, whatever to balance out your eight works, go for it. Perfect. Um, for the question, how many adjudicators are there? It does vary year to year, depending on mm -hmm. how many applications that we get. Just as a note, they are generally um, people who are either like um, going to be members of that year's faculty or have been members of faculty yeah. in years past. Um, so generally, it is the people that are um, kind of teaching you at GSA um, or have taught in the past. Um, but that that uh, definitely varies year to year, like I said, just depending on the number of applications that we get. 
Um, so Matthew, will we be able to add a description or background of what inspired the 3D piece? The best place to put that is going to be on your portfolio cover sheet. Oh, nice. So in that little description of process, that is the perfect place to put that. Awesome. Let's take a look here. Um, if you submit digital work, will there be an image search to make sure it's original? Not necessarily, cool. but it should be original. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah, not necessarily, but it should be original. Um, we will uh, honor system that one. <laughs> um, all righty. If I submit photos of sketchbook experiments from other pieces outside of the eight that are required, would I need to include pictures of the final piece as well? No. No. No, no just your process. process. Yeah. 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 So the so those sketchbook experiments and the three D experiments. Um, like Sean said earlier, those are very much about process and not product. So the eight images that you're submitting for your portfolio are product images. But for the sketchbook, we want to see, you know, how you might take an image from, you know, words and inspiration through the process. So we don't necessarily need to see the final product in that case. We're just looking for your process there. All righty. Um, are original works based on or inspired by existing properties like fan art allowed in any capacity? Preferably not if it's like true fan art. We mm -hmm. want original content, right? So I would I would just think about where you're producing your voice and crafting your voice um, is going to be preferred over fan art, that kind of stuff. Cool. All righty. And I kind of left this one for last, um, just because it is a bit more general. If you have other questions, feel free to keep submitting them. We've got maybe just a few more minutes that we could do that. Um, but is there something specific you're looking for when looking at applications? We're looking for your creative voice and what makes you, you, right? Yeah. Like, so there's no tried and true method. Um, you know, we have a variety of frameworks. Everything that you need is in this application guide. We've poured over it. We've reviewed it. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's got pointers. It's got cheat codes, all that kind of stuff. So I would say that when in doubt, look, um, you know, look to the applicant guide. Also, bug Natalie. It's Natalie's job, right? So that yeah. TSA info, right? Like, don't wait till the last minute. Um, you know, try to, you know, I know, um, you know, the holidays are coming up, so there's going to be maybe some boxes lying around, you know, there's going to be some readily available materials, you know, all this kind of stuff. So like, be open, be curious, be who you are, show us who you, how you're thinking about the world. Um, you know, look at other artists who are, who are inspiring you. What is it? Is it your art teacher? Is it your uncle who was a painter? You know, all these kinds of things. So um all right looks like we got another question i just want to make sure we get to that yeah so um if i were going to use my second art form uh so applying for two different art forms including visual art and yep. design could they submit the same self-portrait and landscape as a design portfolio since it's uh if it's from direct observation, yeah. my advice is if it fits the criteria yeah. on both applicant guides, absolutely. So the, the criteria here is that it's from direct observation and it can be 3D or um, or a different medium. As long as that fits those design guidelines, then yes, you can. Totally. Yeah. Just as a note, like adjudicators for other art forms will not be able to view like so say you're applying for design and visual art, the design adjudicators will not be able to see your visual art application. The visual oh, yeah. art adjudicators yeah. will not be able to see your design application. They can only view the application for the um, art form that they are adjudicating for. So if they fit the criteria, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, once again, just reference those applicant guides and just make mm -hmm. sure because once again, they're there's a little variation between both uh, and art and design are kind of like hand and glove, but they're not quite the same. We're in the same building, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, also I, I do want to give a plug to like UK because we do have like amazing facilities. So GSA is like really um, uh, for, for parents and guardians and young artists that are on this call. Like we have a really great core set of like arguably the best, visual art studios we've had in the program's history because of UK. 
and because of that, we've been able to do some pretty amazing things. So I just want to uh, double down and just give, give a big shout out to the University of Kentucky for hosting us because it allows for a very unique visual arts program with design in the same building. And yeah, anyways, I just want to plug that. Yeah, now. absolutely. Yeah. All righty. Get your last minute questions. And we've got one more that is currently in. And then we might take maybe one more after that. Um, and then others, if, if you have any additional questions, we'll just submit through the GSA info at. But um, we have an artist who likes to do studies of existing artworks in their sketchbook. Is there any way to specifically cite or credit those uh, original artists upon submission? Oh, Sean, you're muted. Yeah. yeah. There you yeah. go. That is an absolutely great question. And absolutely, like, yes, we welcome that. That is, like, part of the process of being an artist. I don't know if that, like, initially in your sketches, if you want to, like, cite the work, that might be one way to do it. Just, like, as, like, you know, study of Van Gogh's chair, right? Mm -hmm. um, legibly or whatever. But um, you could also, um, if it is a specific subset of images, you could, like, have sketchbook one and then, like, title it with a little more detail in the file name that might be one way to do it but if, if because it's part of your process and it's going to be in those sketchbook things I think we'll be okay to negotiate and understand that um, but that is a that's a great method that's that's awesome that you do that already um, you know that you know we encourage that so that's that's not copying right that is like studying and being more um, yeah so anyways that's that's a great question yeah perfect um, so for the interview in March, so that second round um, of adjudication, you will receive a message via accepted that will have the specific date and time that you will be meeting with the adjudicators and you'll also receive the zoom link so um no worries about that you will receive that um with plenty of time to prepare um but you'll get you'll get your date and time and you'll have an opportunity if you're selected as a finalist to request a specific date or time of day um depending on your availability um if for some reason like you're like oh my gosh i have this big thing on the 15th i won't be able to do the 15th we'll we'll schedule you so that you can attend no biggie awesome all righty so we are going to go ahead and wrap up again if you have any additional questions that pop up either you know right after this webinar or throughout the application process feel free to send them to the gsa info inbox that's gsa info at kentucky performing arts.org and kentucky is all spelled out it's not abbreviated um i will be answering a lot of those and if i don't know the answer then i will likely be consulting sean so you'll we'll get you an answer uh one way or the other um sean do you have any last minute kind of uh tips or encouragement any final words to the young artists that are watching today I mean, you all have already started the process, right? By being here and maybe attending a, one, a webinar one on one, you y'all are doing the work now. So we're really excited about that. Like, just be yourself. Um, this should be a fun process. Like, it should not be stressful. Um, GSA is an amazing experience, an amazing opportunity. I'm I'm so thankful that you got all are thinking about it. Um, it's like the highlight of my year to work with you all. Um, and so I'm excited to see what the applicants are this year so just like keep keep on keeping on right like keep keep the work going um be be open be curious um and like i said uh when in doubt look at the application guide and then also when you're in further doubt email gsa the info gsa that natalie just said so um yeah thank you all Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Like Sean said, thank you all so much for attending. If you're attending on Zoom, please fill out the survey that will pop up right after this. Um, it's super quick and it's really, really helpful information for us. And moving forward, again, let us know how we can support you. Um, the GSA team is here for you and we want to see your materials. We want to see you all succeed. So I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your evening. Sean, thank you so much for serving as panelists. I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar. Goodbye.